Now, amid the latest witch hunt and predictable media mob frenzy that has ensued, how is the Trump family, well, how are they reacting to the indictment here now? With some insight, former, former President Trump's uh, daughter-in-law, Laura Trump, is back with us. I know Eric was on the plane with him. I talked to him on my radio show today. Um, it's kind of surreal. I've got to imagine your family's been through a lot, Laura. I mean, Mueller, uh, Stormy, Stormy, you know, this has all gone on for years. Not one, but two impeachments. Uh, they've done everything humanly possible to destroy your father-in-law. And now this is the next step, you know, making up law that never was used before in an attempt, by the way, with the statute of limitations passed, in an attempt to take down your father-in-law yet once again. Yeah, I mean, it just goes to show you, I think, Sean, how afraid they really are of Donald Trump. When you have to go so far as to make up a crime and piece it together with scotch tape to bring down Donald Trump, because you just said it, they've been trying to do this for years, for almost seven years now, to take him down. Um, it's rather amazing. But yeah, it is a little surreal to, to truly think that this is where we are right now in the United States of America. And I think it's frightened a lot of people. I think it's it's awakened a lot of people. You know, as of 72 hours post-indictment, the Trump campaign raised $7 million. That is an incredible statistic. And I said on Friday on your show that a quarter of the donations were from first-time Trump uh, supporters. They had never donated ever to the Trump campaign in any campaign. So it is rather amazing to see the support from people out there, even with Sarah Carter's interviews there in the liberal bastion of New York City, to hear that people really do get it. I, well, I hope the people that ultimately are picked on the jury get it as well and see it as a political persecution and not a real trial and not based on real law. Um, I'm watching, I want to get your reaction, and I know Eric was on the plane with, with your father-in-law, and your reaction to the O.J.-like coverage of all of this. Uh, O.J., of course, accused of killing two people, um, and the driver of the car is saying he's got a gun and he's in the back seat and he may kill himself. Okay, this is over a $130,000 NDA about an affair that both sides agreed never happened even after the money was paid. So, my, I mean, that's got to be surreal to you and your entire family. Well, uh, the, the craziest part, Sean, I think, is after landing in New York to see the entire New York Police Department in full force, mobilized, lining the streets. I mean, this must have cost the taxpayers of New York tens of millions of dollars, the uh, security coverage for this situation. And you just said it, over what? Over $130,000 completely legal non-disclosure agreement payment. You know, these things happen all day, every day in the United States of America. And the sad part is that Alvin Bragg, of course, the district attorney there in Manhattan, is supposed to be locking up criminals, supposed to be keeping the streets of New York safe. Yet this is where all of the energy, focus, and taxpayer money is going. We know their investigation has been years long into my father-in-law. They've been trying to find anything possible on him. And here we are on the eve uh, of his arraignment. Obviously, he will go down to the courthouse tomorrow. He will be fingerprinted. I assume there will be a mug shot taken. Um, and all over something that was not a crime. The only crime that Donald Trump committed, of course, was winning the 2016 election without the help of the swamp and the establishment. It, it says on Drudge, mug shot of the century. And Pete Hegseth, my friend, colleague, made a good point on an earlier show, and he said, that will, that will probably become the biggest selling Trump 2024 T-shirt out there. Uh, and I'd probably add hats and other swag with it as well. But uh, I think that will backfire on people. Because when people look at the insignificance of the issue and, you know, a law that had never been tried, used before, and the, the length and the depth and depravity of this, in, uh, you know, indictment to begin with, uh, and then to do this to a former president, I do believe there will be a backlash. I mentioned two polls that show a 20 percent increase in the president's approval rating and, and poll numbers since the indictment. So I think that's going to tell us a lot. I think it will. I think you're right. I think uh, that mugshot will probably go down in history as the most famous mugshot uh, ever to exist in America, for sure. Um, 
But I think people really get it, and they, they see Donald Trump as a symbol, really a freedom, as, as a symbol for all the, the freedom-loving patriots in this country. Let's face it, he has stood up against all different kinds of attacks throughout the time he ran for president the first time, the second time, while he was in the White House. And he continues to stand up in the face of all of it, despite all of this. They want him to quit. They want him to give up. They want him to stop. And he refuses to do it. So what do they have to do? They have to make up charges. They have to bring him up to New York, spend tens of millions of New York City taxpayer dollars all for nothing. It will only make him stronger. It will only make him more popular. And I think it will solidify him as the 47th president. All right, Laura Trump, thank you for being with us. As the great one, Mark Levin says, a post-constitutional America. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.